Hello everyone. Now, as you can hopefully tell from a fancy graphic that played just now, and from the stuff I've said in my last episode, this time we will be going to the moon. There is only been one rocket launch in this video, but it should be enough to generate a lot of science, and after that we should be going to Minmus. The rocket I'm constructing is bigger than anything I've created and has multiple stages. It also has the gimbling engine at the bottom, and although I don't have fuel lines at the moment, the gimbling engine burns fuel slightly slower than the other engines on the side, so it, they should they shall separate before the main rocket. Now I've remembered to name my rocket this time and to call it Apollo, not because of what the Greek deity did, but because of the real life missions that happened in 1969. Now, in order to get to the moon as efficiently as possible, you need to line yourself up. You want to be roughly 60 degrees um, from the moon, and that means that you're likely to encounter it um, as efficiently as possible. Now in this episode, we're also going to be aiming to um, break through and complete all three of these contracts. And although I checked, we don't have anyone asking us to go to the moon just yet. I don't know what happens if I'm asked to go to the moon after I've already been there, but this should still be enough to gain a lot of science points, lots of reputation, and lots of money. Now this launch is fairly straightforward, luckily because of the gimbling engine and torque, the other rockets flying nice and straight. And in this one, this is the first episode where the Science Junior features. That should be that. That is likely to provide the bulk of the science we get from this mission. A Science Junior is almost as much as a surface sample, and in some cases, I think it's worth more. So that is likely to be uh, worth a lot and worth having. Although I mean, I could have put uh, for like uh, at least six uh, Science Juniors on because I'm also going to be getting into orbit around Kerbin and high over Kerbin and high over Moon and near Moon and whatever and the Moon also has different biomes but the uh, the science unit is very heavy I've also only attached three landing legs in order to save weight because I think this mission is likely to be very tight on fuel I've been playing Co for a while so I know how to get to the Moon without using maneuver nodes but as I say, because this is going to be so tight, because I have gone early, I think this is my fifth uh, rocket launch already, and I'm already attempting the moon, I think that I wouldn't want to risk it. I'm not going to be reverting to quick saves, and I'd rather not have poor uh, Bill here stranded on the moon's surface when I could have him back home at Kerbin celebrating and giving out science when I could be using maneuver nodes. So, although I'm not going to set it as a target, I should encounter it, oh yeah, straight away. That's what the 60 degrees was for, so that it makes it nice and easy to land to and land on and get to. Now, although the burn says that it's going to last for 14 minutes, it won't. I don't know what's going on there, but once we fire the engines, it should settle out. We've completed the first of the contracts I see, uh, which did happen a while ago, but I've only just noticed. And there's another one, Reach Space, which happens at about 70,000 meters, once you uh, get out of the atmosphere. Now, soon we should be achieving orbit around Kerbin, but that won't last for long as we're quickly going to be going straight to the moon. We're not going to be uh, doing any orbital maneuvers, we're just going to go straight there. Now also, because the gimbling engine burned fuel slightly slower, we've now shedded some weight as the external fuel tanks and the boosters um, separate and fall back down to Kerbin, which does mean we don't get all of the money back from this mission like previous ones, but we like to get so much from completing contracts that it should be fine. A nice shot there of the uh, separation between the uh, lower stage there. I don't know why I did it, but why not? <laughs> it looks great. Now, yes, the uh, the uh, estimated burn has gone down a lot. don't know why it was so high before, but yeah, we're already in orbit. That did not take long. And I could 
deagle bitten right now and then I've completed the contracts. But as I say, we're going to the moon and for some reason it doesn't say we're going to encounter it on the map. I don't know what's happening. Ooh, that's odd. Yeah, let's remove that. I don't know what's going on there. But we're there and we've got no fuel in that stage. I'd have liked to have a little bit more to help us slow down rather than using the um, LV909, the smaller engine, to completely slow our rocket down as we're heading towards the moon. But it should be enough. And isn't Bill poetic? He's found that the Kerbin looks very round when looked from a, a very high altitude. And getting some extra crucial data, as I say, we probably could have used some Mystery Goo or Science Juniors on here, but I've tried to save as much weight as possible. Now we don't have a periapsis when we approach the moon, so this is likely to be a direct collision so slowing down is going to be key. I'm not going to be circularizing my orbit when I get there. I'm just going to hope that I land somewhere nice, <laughs> which is how I tend to play the game really. I don't go into too much effort until I get to more sort of interplanetary stuff. The moon, oh, it's, I've been there a lot, it's a friendly place. Um, but you can still fall over and topple but the gravity is low, so you should be able to write yourself. And we're getting some more science data now, and now here we go in for the descent. We have very little fuel in that stage, and it's gone. Yeah, now we've just got to slow down using the 909, which is actually going better than I thought. I've, yes, hope, luckily, because I've kept the weight down, I can slow down quite quickly. I've started burning earlier than I thought actually, I'd rather have not left it too late. But this should be relatively flat. If we land just on no, we've missed the ridge. Okay, this isn't gonna be flat, we're likely to fall over. Would you Ooh. Well, Bill seems happy. <laughs> we're gonna be getting the science data either way. And as long as I landed as long as I can land with more than about 78 units of fuel, then I think we're fine. Which ooh, might just happen. This is as, I could spend some fuel to land on that flat area, but as I say, this is this is tight. Oh, this is I've used slightly more fuel than I've liked, but. We're coming in nice and gently. Ooh. I think this should be fine. Oh no, no, oh, no, that's a lot more slope than I thought. No, oh, now we're down. Oh no, I'm not going to get back. Oh dear. Oh well, Bill's happy. Science data can be gathered and experiments can be carried out. Nevertheless, there's an, I'm going to try to write myself after I've gathered the data. But I really don't want to break anything. <laughs> yeah, lots of science there for that um, Science Junior report, and quite a bit from the, all the EVA reports I'm getting. Now, we should be able to see Kerbin from the moon because of where he landed. That'd be nice. But, where is it? It should be just on the other side, perhaps. Up there. Yeah, there. Oh, there we go. That's nice. But at the moment, the priority is, of course, getting a nice shot. <laughs> Not planting a flag or taking some science, but getting a nice shot with Bill in the picture. That's what he requested, so that's what will happen. Then we can focus on getting some extra science data, and I've saved an extra goo canister. There we go, isn't that lovely? <laughs> now I've saved an extra goo canister f so that I can take data from where I land on Kerbin. Now this is going to be the first flag we plant, and it's going to be on the moon. So here we go. I don't know what I'm going to call it. I'm all flip naming flags, but it's likely to be something very generic. <laughs> yes, there we go. Moon landing. Moon landing site, perhaps. No, nope, moon landing. And yes, this is the first step for Kerbal Kind, or first step to conquering the Kerbal system. 
Now you're likely to see auto saves pop up in the corner like that quite a bit, but I'm not going to be using them as you know. I'm just going to be going, if things don't go well, then Bill is gone. I probably should have recruited some new, pe new people from the uh, recruitment centre because I've suddenly realised how much I don't want to lose one of the main three, but this should be fine. Although I have landed with 78 units of fuel, which I estimated should be enough to get home. We are on the side of the rocket, so there's, there's going to be some tricky shenanigans going on on the surface now. This is likely to be sped up, so it doesn't take too long because this is tricky stuff. Nor does it look very nice, it just looks weird. But, try as Bill might, operating the controls and manipulating the dubious amounts of torque that wouldn't really exist in real life, he cannot right the vessel. So Bill hatches a plan to use one of the mystery goo canisters to propel him on his journey, using it as a sort of leverage system to swing the upper end towards the stars where he can um, activate the engines. Landing gear doesn't help, and here, yeah, here I'm just planning which way to go, and we're about to launch ourselves, get straight, and here we go. We should just do it. Fire the engines, and yes, there we go. The Kerbal spaceship is up, and we're on the home trajectory. I saw the fuel just before we launched, it was actually 77.2, so we, we should do it. We should do it. That used less fuel than I thought, even though it was inconvenient. And luckily, nothing blew up, which was a concern throughout all that. Now again, I'm going to be using uh, manoeuvre nodes, and I forgot to report there, which I've got to to 20 science, not bad. Yeah, manoeuvre nodes to me, just because I've got to get this. <laughs> I would hate to have Bill in a, a, an eccentric, hard to, uh, re, re, hard to rescue curve in orbit when I don't even have docking ports just yet. Now we do have an encounter, but I'm trying to lower the uh, estimated burn time, which I'm not doing a very good job at, to be honest. <laughs> but it doesn't matter where we land, even if we land on the water, as long as we get there. Now that our burn is roughly 33 seconds, although I can probably afford burning slightly less than that, because I only need to encounter Kerbin at a roughly 20,000 periapsis, because that'll be enough to aerobreak enough to be uh, uh, pulled into the pulled into Kerbin and make contact. We should have just enough fuel to make this. This was a lot closer than I've liked. Now I'm just checking uh, goo canisters here. We should still have one left because if we land on the water, I know that that's an extra piece of science data. And there we go, I probably actually could have burned speed less, but we've encountered Kerbin with 0 0.01 units of fuel left. Oh, that was close. That was, yes, that was by a hair. But it doesn't matter, I don't need to use my engines at all, thanks to the parachutes incorporated into the design. And although the entry is likely to be harsh, we're entering pretty quickly, the parachutes, parachutes which would have burned up, haven't. <laughs> so that's fine. Now this descent is going to take quite some time, because uh, we're going very slowly now due to the parachutes, but I'm, I'm fine with that. Bill doesn't look it, but I am fine. All we need is to get home. I don't care about 
um, whether we're going 0.1 meters per second or 6 meters per second, as long as it's safe and as long as we can get the science data. Now, I haven't sped up the actual video here, but I will be using time warp just so that I get down in time. Parachutes are going to be opening any minute. There they go, quite a bit of G's, and yeah, just under 6 meters per second. This should be safe, and why not? If I've got the, f if I've, if I can time it right, I may as well use that fuel to slow my descent by a negligible amount. But I'll do it. I'll fire the rocket just before we hit the surface to make sure that the uh, landing is nice and safe. We are quite far from the KSC at this point, so not going to get too much. But we've touched down, well, I've splashed down really. Much like the real Apollo mission, but that had three men, so not quite the same. I could have taken others, but that would have been required a very weird looking craft with three crew capsules. Now, as I said, landing on water gives you a lot of extra science points. The surface sample should be roughly 10, 9, 10 um, uh, science points alone, and I have goo canisters and reports crew reports and EVA reports to conduct, so this should be a very uh, lucrative, in science terms and in funds terms, mission. But this is likely to be all I've got time for this episode, and as I, however, as I say, this should be enough to get me everything I need to go to Mimus. This <laughs> it's very weird getting onto the ladder there, odd oh, animation that happened on the moon as well. Now, as we recover the vessel, how much science did we get? 442 science points, which I could have got more if I visited other biomes, but that's enough. All I needed was to get to Mimus and have perhaps some lights and solar panels. We've got lots of funds and plenty of reputation. That's all I've got time for this episode. Goodbye, see you next time.